Our first lesson today is from the prophet Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. And I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. And I invite you now to sing along with Anna again as she sings, Lo, how a rose air blooming. in his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, Abstain from every form of evil. 
May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies are without end. God's kindness is new every morning. Rejoice, O people, rejoice. In all things, give thanks. Not for all things, not for greed and bigotry, not for disease and, and famine, not for homelessness and oppression, certainly not. But neither wait till everything is just right and just so to rejoice and give thanks for, for that never will be. In all things, at all times, have a heart for gratitude and grace and give thanks to God. For it was in the morning of time that the Lord God gave to the people of the earth a garden. And God blessed it and said, It is good. But the people of the earth said, It's nice, but it's not enough. We'd like something more. We'd like some knowledge, please, they said. Now, knowledge is a powerful thing. Knowledge is a good thing. Knowing right from wrong, knowing the difference between good and evil, is a godly thing. Well, you know, a, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Knowledge that doesn't know what it doesn't know can be a deadly thing. And so the people of the earth got some knowledge, but they had no more than taken a taste of it when they became full, desiring no more. For they had become full of themselves and intoxicated with the thought of what they might do. So the people said, now that we have knowledge, we'd like things. Things to build with, things to play with, things to use. And, and the Lord God gave the people things. Precious and beautiful things, awesome and wondrous things. The sun to warm the day, the moon and stars to grace the night. Trees for food and trees for shade and shelter. Lightning and thunder, rain and flowers, animals and birds and fish of every kind God gave to the people of the earth. And God blessed it and said, it is good. The people said, it's nice, but it's not enough. Give us more. And out of God's infinite kindness, the Lord God gave them more. God gave them a rainbow and God gave them a promise. Many signs and wonders did God give them. God gave them a way where there was no way, parting the waters of the sea. God gave them food and drink and sustained them on their journey through a parched land. God gave them commandments and laws to teach them. God gave them a land and a home. God gave them children and God gave them each other though some began to think of people as things, things to be built, things to be played with, things to be used. So God gave them priest and prophet, priest to comfort the afflicted and prophet to afflict the comfortable. All these things God gave the people of the earth because God loved them very much with a love that never ceases. God's mercies are without end. Too often, however, the people did not appreciate the things that they had been given. They misplaced them. They misused them. They broke them. Still, God loved the people very much. So because God had made a promise and because God is faithful and because God's word cannot be broken, God gave them love in the body and heart and mind and soul of a child. God's word in the flesh, full of grace and truth. Through him I give to all the people of the earth peace, said God. And the people said, that's nice. 
And the child grew and became a man. Recalling the ancient words of the prophet Isaiah, he said, The Spirit of God is upon me to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to make known the year of God's favor. The one thing the prophet said, he did not say. He did not say that he had come to announce the day of God's vengeance, nor did he come to condone vengeance by anyone else. No, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, love your enemy too, because anyone can love someone who loves them. He said, pray for those who persecute you. Do not return an eye for an eye or a curse for a curse. And he touched lepers. He fed the hungry. He blessed the poor. He ate with sinners and tax collectors. He healed a paralyzed man and said, your sins are forgiven. He raised the dead. And he saved a woman's life. A woman who had been caught in adultery. You who are, with, who are without sin may cast the first stone, he said, which meant, of course, that no one could. And some were very not pleased. So it was in the name of righteousness and reason, certain people said, now that's too much. We don't want any more of that. And so it was, and so it goes. The people who would love the baby would crucify the man. And I pray that those people are not us. But if the, if the babe in the manger is not allowed a voice to speak, if the child of Mary is not allowed to grow up, there may be boatloads of warm sentiment and good intention and, and all live happily ever after like in a fairy tale, but... This is not a fairy tale. In life, we are in the midst of death and darkness and despair and decay. In the world, enemies burn candles in the night plotting their evil against one another. And those who have dream of having more. Woe is us, we cry. Woe is me, cried the prophet, for I too am guilty. I am a man of unclean lips and thoughts and desires in the midst of people just the same. Infant, holy, infant, lowly, make us holy, make us humble. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. But if there is no repentance, how can we call him Lord? God's mercies are without end. But if there is no forgiveness, how shall we call him Savior? God's kindness is new every morning. If there is no reconciliation, how shall we call him Prince of Peace? Rejoice, O people, rejoice. If all this noise is about something that happened somewhere far away, sometime long ago to someone else, how shall we call him Emmanuel? God with us. Our God is the, the one who comes to us, has been coming since time began, walking in the garden with Adam and Eve, wrestling in the wilderness with Jacob, speaking from the cloud on the mountain to Moses in a burning bush, in a still small voice, in an angel song, in the darkness of the night, in the brightness of the day, God comes. And neither my preparations nor my preoccupations shall hasten or delay or deter God's coming. When God is ready, God will come. Again, in a manner that God sees fit. Watch then, for you know not when or how or where. Watch then, that you might be found whenever, wherever God comes that you might receive that very special gift which God brings just for you. But not only you, actually, it's, it's for all. There are some who won't want it, I, I can tell you, will try to return it like it's an ugly sweater, two sizes too small. Some will never be satisfied no matter what. 
They wander through the malls and stores or wherever it is that people go. They scour the websites looking for that Christmas magic. And they will say, that's nice, but it's not enough. It's not what I'm looking for, or it costs too much. I can't afford it. They will open boxes and boxes of all kinds of things, things to be built, things to be played with, things to be used. Perhaps there it will be found inside the pretty paper and cardboard and ribbons and bows, but it's not there. That which the heart longs for, the soul desires, that which satisfies, that which lasts, will not be found in things. And those who search for it there, well, there will be a great disappointment. Perhaps they did not hear. Perhaps they did not see that there is one gift left, a gift more precious and beautiful than any other, though it is not wrapped in fine or fancy paper. It is a gift of God still waiting to be opened themselves, yourself. How silently this wondrous gift is given. God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, open us up. Dwell in us. Sanctify us. Heal us of our sin and sickness our anxiety, our fear. Cure thy children's warring madness. Grant us courage. Grant us grace. Grant us your peace that in all things, in sunshine and rain, in summer and winter, in sickness and in health, in abundance and in want, with glad and grateful hearts we may rejoice and give thanks to you Always.